So you took on quite a project with Halloween. What intimidated you most and what excited you most about this project? Um, the most intimidating part of tackling a, a franchise like Halloween is how to bring your own fingerprint to it. You know, so many stories have been told of Michael Myers, so much mythology has evolved. How can I make something that uh, feels both intimate and epic? Uh, so m my goal was to strip it down to its core essence of evil, uh, tell a story that felt uh, very uh, uh, personally self-indulgent, mm -hmm. and bring great collaborators on board. Uh, uh, guys like John Carpenter doing the music, Jason Blum as a producer, Danny McBride as a co-writer, people that I really believed and trusted and helped navigate. Now speaking about this core of evil, what do you think it is about Mike Myers that just makes him so frightening on so many different levels? Yeah, Michael Myers is a very specific villain because he's he's a lot less charismatic than some of the, the you know, Hannibal Lecter or Freddy Krueger. Or, um, I find that he fits more into almost a, 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 a classic movie monster motif, Wolfman or Mummy, and you know, there's something uh, people love to see about him. And, and I, I feel like it's the, the, the nothingness of him that we project our own anxiety and fear and horror onto him. Now I saw the film yesterday and the audience was just like going crazy and bonkers over it as well they should because it's great. Can you talk about where the last Halloween left off and where your Halloween picks up? Our, uh, the, uh, the John Carpenter's 1978 movie, there's a moment at the end of the movie where Laurie Strode is talking to Tommy and Lindsay, and she's telling them to get out of the house and go across her, you get the cops, and she says, do as I say. So we've taken a character that's an innocent, romantic, uh, starry-eyed schoolgirl and taken her to this moment of confidence and empowerment. Now cut to 40 years later, she's taken do as I say, and that's kind of her mantra. And she's got this authority, she's got this confidence, and we see her unleash. Now I feel as if this movie pays homage to the Halloween franchise, but you also put your own twist on it. So can you tell me what the audiences can expect from your Halloween? Um, well, first and foremost, we wanted to make a very scary movie. Our idea was to, to lead with that and make a movie that uh, was a tribute to John uh, Carpenter's 1978 film. Uh, our, our our environment was slightly different in that there's um, improv, there's some comedy, there's some interesting elements emotionally that we're engineering so that it becomes uh, an exercise of a lot of genres in one. Again, we're leading with it as a horror movie and, a, and, and scares are, are, are essential. Um, but I want it to be a roller coaster. I want it to have highs and lows and ups and downs and laughs and tension breakers and relief and uh, adrenaline and anxiety. Uh, if I can jam pack all of those elements into one movie, then we'll have a good time. Hey horror fans, stay with me as I've got some facts from horror movies. Now in order to make Samara's walk as creepy as possible in the ring, they filmed her walking backwards and then reversed the shot. Now the skeletons in Poltergeist are not props, they are real human skeletons. And the real life Lorraine Warren makes a cameo in The Conjuring as an audience member while the character Lorraine Warren is speaking. What's your favourite horror movie? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe to our channel and check the notification bell to keep up to date on all the latest releases.